This video is going to cover the very basics of setting up Security Onion, a Linux distribution from Doug Books designed so that you can set up a network security monitoring server very easily. So out of the box we'll end up having Snort, Snorby, Barnyard 2, Pulled Pork, Daemon Logger, and so forth. Check out his blog at securityonion.blogspot.com. Now this video is only going to show the basics of getting Security Onion up and running and I'm probably only using it to about 5% of its capabilities. So keep that in mind. Now when you first do an install of Security Onion, one thing you should probably know is that the ISO that's kept out there isn't as up to date as some of the scripts. So let me actually show you what I mean by that. If you go out to where you can download the ISO, you'll notice that it is not up to the current version. So basically you have to install the ISO. I'm not showing that particular part because essentially it's just like installing any other Ubuntu like distribution. Just you know next next yes yes choose your options and so forth. But you have to apply an uh script afterwards to actually suck down everything else. Now there's a couple things I'd recommend doing before that and let me show you um where you can find the commands to actually suck down that update script. First thing though, and uh, I'm doing all this in VMware just for convenience, I actually have two instances of Security Onion running. One is for test, one's for production. The production runs running on my EX, EXI, Xbox, ESXi box, sorry. Uh, it's hard for me to get that out of my mouth sometimes. Um, and uh, it was giving me issues when trying to actually record the video. So instead I'm going to use this uh, VMware player session instead to show you the configuration. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get a admin shell so I can get in there and uh, do stuff as root. Now, this password and everything else, username and so forth, you configured when you first installed Security Onion. At this point, I should be able to do an apt get update, apt get dist upgrade. Now, I've already done that. So it's not going to suck down nearly as much stuff as if you just installed from the ISO. Uh, but just to let you know, it's probably something you should do first. Also, another thing I've done, you'll notice I have VMware tools in there. That's just for the convenience of working on this virtual machine. Other than that, this is pretty much just a straight up install of uh, Security Onion. I have run through the setup one time before, but that should make a difference for this uh, tutorial. Now, we're going to have to go and actually do an update. Luckily, Doug Books has put all the details out there. Doug Books is the uh, lead developer of the Security Onion project. It has made it really, really convenient to uh, install all these network security monitoring tools. But let's say we want to do an update. We can go here and if uh, Security Onion updates, and I'm actually going to show you the commands you can use. Essentially, it's as easy as using curl to grab the file you need. This is a little shell script and then it's going to run the shell script and do the upgrades. And depending on the amount of bandwidth you have, this may take a little bit of time, but uh, last time I ran it, it didn't seem to take a whole lot. I'll probably end up pausing during a small section of this uh, video just because there's no sense watching a blue line cross the screen. It seems like I spent an inordinate amount of my uh, life watching a blue line cross the screen. So as you see, it's going to be uh, grabbing our script, and then it's eventually going to be applying updates. You notice that as of right now, we have a few front ends, like Squirt, and uh, I guess they pronounce that Sigual or Esgile. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, notice that we don't have Snorby as of yet. We'll have that after the upgrade. So it's doing its thing. So I'm going to pause the video for a short time and we'll continue here in a bit. It took a little bit to get everything fired up. Uh, you can see it's uh, grabbing a new barnyard too with a little back end to make a snort a little bit more efficient. And so I'll grab a bunch of other tools and apply some settings and uh, get snore before you as well. Uh, while I'm standing here uh, waiting for that to finish installing, let me go in the FAQs. There's tons of different options you can configure with Security Onion, definitely check out the FAQ. For instance, you might want to later on just run anything in text mode. I noticed when I was running it on my uh, ESXi box, it kind of was running somewhat slow, probably because I didn't uh, allocate enough resources to it. 
let me go back in and show you one setting I think you should definitely make and that is turning off the screen saver so go back into my VM if you go underneath settings you can go in the screen saver and currently I have it set to a random screen saver I'm going to turn that off and that should do it for me and it's doing its install so um, I'll pause again for a short amount of time and we'll get back into this okay that took a fair amount of time probably because I have all this other stuff going on on my network right now let me shrink this down and you see we now have Snorby but we have to run setup first and tell it how we want everything configured because it's have to use a uh, sudo and of course you have to type your password in correctly there we go I'm going to say continue because yeah I do want to configure it and I'm going to use advanced setup though pretty much everything I'm going to do is pretty much exactly what would happen if I had chosen quick setup you can choose to have just a sensor or just a server or both I'm going to choose both you could have multiple sensors all across your network in different locations if you wanted or different facilities I imagine yes yeah, so I want to go ahead and keep snort as my default engine I've not messed enough with the other one to really be able to say anything yep if zero is a good one to uh, grab I don't have an oint code so I'm just going to use the emerging threats GPL setting and uh, we have to set up a username let's go with iron geek and an email address for Sorby and the password ideally you should probably go with something longer than what I just did yes proceed with changes and that's doing its thing this can also take a little bit of time and also keep in mind when you first start uh, using uh, Snorby um, sometimes after you um, do like a rule update or something like that it can take a bit of time and I'll show you how to do rule updates here very very shortly right now it's using pulled pork to grab down some uh, new snort rules those are the ones I'm going to show you how to basically disable some things because uh, depending on how your network is set up you may have a lot of noise that you just don't care about okay that should be finished and of course you get some recommendations here and we'll say okay and we'll try to start Snorby right now though it may not function quite yet you have to give it a little bit of time by the way so some other cool features you'll probably want to look into there's so many different tools that come along with security onion go check out all these and if you watched one of my videos on sniffers a while back you probably um, saw me cover this particular tool explico perhaps it's pronounced I'm not a hundred percent sure alright well we're gonna connect into here shortly ah so we made the connection and it's using its own little self-signed certificate so we have to go ahead and uh, add an exception and say yep that's fine go ahead and get it get the certificate and now we can log in to Snorby these of course are the credentials you entered earlier and it's this Ajaxy like interface currently we don't see any settings in there we we'll have to generate some events here in a bit and you see there's just one event it sees that someone's using Dropbox on the network that's not something I particularly care about let's for giggles try to generate another event this worked last time at least let me open up a new tab let's see give it a whole bunch of C's and just do a Google query for that hopefully there's a method to my madness that will come up here shortly whole bunch of C's and let's go back in here and we'll refresh events and you see that particular set of C's it triggers a certain rule um, that the hex code for that can actually be used as a no-op if we wanted to look more information on that particular rule we can actually view the rule that causes it to trigger we can also go in here and query a signature database which will take us off to a website that describes the rule in more depth 
depending on what the rule is. There are not all of these necessarily have information out there that's readily available. But it basically explains it's a no op, and uh, in x86, essentially, it corresponds to the op code for increment the EBX register, which can apparently be used as a no op. A few other features that you have is, of course, you can look up information on IP addresses. Like you can do a basic source lookup. This should say this belongs to Insight Cable. By the way, um, in case you're wondering, no, this is not going to be my IP address by the time this uh, video tutorial is actually posted. And it's taking its sweet time to actually load. Another thing I should probably show you, you see this signature ID? Let's say you didn't want to see this signature ever again. You can actually go in and edit your rules. Now, if you go into IDS rules, disable download rules, you can go in here and set things. For instance, disable that one, I would type in its generator, which in this case you can see from uh, back here was one, and colon, and whatever the particular ID number was, which in this case you see it was 1390. At that point, I could close this down save it and essentially I have to go in here and do a rules update because it's going to uh, need root privileges to do that and it goes out and uses pulled pork and grabs new rules and that particular rule it disables now there's a lot more complicated ways you can disable things and um, there's so many um, things that from my perspective would be false positives yeah, this is not functioning particularly well in the VM, so I'm probably going to have to uh, demo this in a different way. Let's do that basic lookup again and see if it will actually come up. Cool. Things should be functioning now. Now, I'm actually going to uh, SSH into my production box. Well, actually, I've already SSH'd into it. Now I can just uh, SU do I give me an interactive shell. Yeah, this may not be the best practice, but it's awfully convenient for what I'm about to do. Let's say I want to actually edit that rules file. Because you have to not fat finger everything. Underneath pulled pork, there is a disable sids.cont file. You can see I disabled a whole bunch and I used the comma to separate them. This is a bunch of stuff like, um, let's say, Dropbox traffic, Tor traffic, um, t BitTorrent, stuff that I don't really care about seeing because it's going to be real common on my network. Also, there's a couple of ways you can block things. For instance, if you want to block based on description, I use this to block Tor, this to block anything that has BitTorrent in the descriptive name. Also, I get a lot of uh, IPs that are you know just generally not very trustworthy. I was getting so many messages that said there was some stuff coming from the Russian business network or known Russian business network IP that I also blocked that out. Thanks to uh, Martin uh, Holstead for showing me how to do that. This is the rules I've actually applied on my production box as of right now. If I wanted to actually run that, I could do a pulled pork. Pardon me. update sh. If I hit enter right there, that would uh, run and uh, actually do the updates. So it's going along doing its thing. Alright, the VM is really not being responsive here, so let me see if I can... Huh, requested content cannot be loaded. Well, if that had worked, it would give me some information about that particular IP address, who owns that net block, and uh, whatnot. I may try again here shortly. Another thing you can do is you can search by source and also search by destination and so forth and find other events related to that. You can also go in and um, do search by let's say a signature like if I want to look for stuff involving no ops. I could do it like that. You could also um, of course search by destination port and so forth. There's tons of different options. We're going to do some stuff to generate some traffic here. Let 
we're going to do some stuff to generate some traffic here rather shortly to give you a better idea. Oh, another thing you should probably be made aware of, you may want to edit your uh, snort cont file. So you go in the uh, Etsy snort snort conf and right now since I have everything uh, natted off which is no reason I'm not getting as much uh, malicious traffic this will work however let's say I have a different IP range I want to uh, monitor I want to add that on there also whatever your um, sensor happens to be on now let's actually uh, do some stuff to get some more malicious traffic something a little bit more interesting and for this we're going to switch to using my production box I'm not using it for the entire video because quite frankly it wasn't being very responsive when I tried to do this video yesterday so let me go here to web browser and actually here's my production box there's a few ways we can generate some traffic to see if things are working but first we gotta set things up to where we actually get the traffic there's a few ways we can go about doing that. Now I'm using DDWRT and once again to reiterate this is not going to be my IP address when I actually uh, post this video. You can go underneath your router and also the router packages have this capability. Set up a demilitarized zone and point it all towards one IP address. I just want to see what's coming in and hitting uh, the WAN side of my uh, cable modem. That will go there. Another thing you can do is, and I got this trick from this particular website, my open router. This guy showed me how to use certain IP tables rules to send all the traffic going from my router and basically make what's essentially a mirror port. So uh, this is nice and convenient if you want to monitor everything on your network that's going in and out for your WAN. So I'm actually going to issue those commands and uh, I already have a session set up to my router and I'll go ahead and issue those two commands and that should start sending all the traffic, at least until next reboot, to my production uh, box that's running Security Onion. Now I should be getting a whole lot more traffic. And actually this is the events that were going on right there. So now even if it's not necessarily going to this particular box, this 192.168.1.2, it should still grab it. Um, to generate some traffic, there's a few ways you can do that just to test to see if everything's up and functioning. I showed you using the whole bunch of C's method. Uh, another thing you can do is go to Nmap Online and have it scan your box. And uh, GRC also has those shields up, so you can go in there and tell it to scan your box as well. And I'm going to tell it all service ports. And that should be generating a whole lot of traffic coming my way. Now we can go in here and uh, we should get some kind of notification. Now keep in mind this is a very Ajaxy type interface. Let me go in here and uh, see if I can do basic source lookup. Ooh, 29 new events. Uh, sorry, 28 new events. Let's see if we can do the basic lookup and have it actually functioning. They may be using a site in the back end and while I'm doing this demo, maybe that site's down. I'm not 100% sure. Ah, there we go. That's what I actually wanted to show you. Shows you information about who all owns that net block. Convenient information to have. And let's go ahead and click here to get those next events. You can see these are IP addresses. I can click there and uh, say I want to see everything basic lookup, uh, sorry, search by source and find all the events associated with that particular IP address, maybe uh, do some correlation. Um, you also see when we go in there that you, uh, depending on the type of alert, sometimes you also get like payload information. Like if I go down here to, well, let me go back and uh, let's see if we can generate that uh, CCCCCCC again. Let's go to Google this may or may not work. I may have this one disabled on the production box. I don't honestly recall. Well, let's do a search for no-op. Depending on the particular payload, you may actually have a little capture about what exactly caused that rule to be triggered, which is all very, very nifty in my opinion. So let's go back and, oh, on the front panel, of course, Snorby, this one's going to be much more interesting. 
it's going to show us um, hmm, production box is not being as responsive. It's going to break down things by severity level. You also get a nice little network graph showing different uh, statistical information. This is Snorby. Snorby is a uh, very, very pretty. Mess around with it. A lot of fun. Like I said, I'm only using Security Onion for a very limited set of features. It's a lot more it can do. So I highly recommend you uh, download it and uh, play around with it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video so far, and uh, I may be covering some of the other things you can do with Security Onion in the near future. Thanks much for your time. Because it's expected, here's a bunch of links that I used throughout this video. Hopefully they'll be helpful for doing more research on Security Onion, Snort, Snorby, and so forth.